Hey everybody, and thanks for tuning in again to another episode of If This Car Could Talk. For our 92nd edition to the channel, we're featuring an incredible 1967 Plymouth GTX convertible from the Dennis Carey Collection. We've featured a few of Dennis's other cars in previous episodes, and all are very nice. You guys will love this gentleman's hot rod. We're pushing for 1,000 subscribers and really need your help to get there. Subscribing to the channel is free and it's easy and ensures that you'll never miss any of our videos, which are released every Sunday. Here's Dennis to give you the intriguing background story of his sweet Mopar. Now, let's go for a ride. Hello, my name is Dennis Carey and I live here in Phoenix, Arizona, originally from Detroit. And today you're looking at my 1967 Plymouth GTX 440 convertible. Uh, of which they made 680 of those convertibles. This particular car actually has a unique story on it. I was at a car show with my Hemi GTX hardtop in 2003. And uh, I'm displaying it at one of the Mopar shows and this fellow comes up to me and he goes, oh, I really like your GTX. Uh, I have one too. And I go, you do? Yeah. He says, but mine's a convertible. And I said, oh. So that piqued my interest immediately. And I said, so uh, you didn't bring it out? He goes, no, no, it needs to be restored. And I go, okay, okay. He says, yeah, um, you know, I'm going to restore it. And, uh, you know, I, then I'll bring it out. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, I've heard that story before. I'm going to restore it. So... Uh, he happened to be a uh, architect, and I'm thinking, okay, this guy probably doesn't have a whole lot of time on his hands, but maybe he does. So the next year I go to the show, he comes back again, and uh, I said, "Say, hey, how you doing on that convertible?" Well, I'm hoping to start it this year. And I go, okay, and I'm thinking, there we go. So uh, this goes on, believe it or not for four years. He's always going to restore it. He always comes to see me at the show, but nothing ever happens. Going into the fifth year, he comes to the show, and uh, I said, so did you start the project this year? He goes, um, well, I took it apart. I go, uh oh, I took it apart. So now I can imagine, let's see, he took it apart. So if he hasn't worked on it, Oh, well, I sent it to somebody, and they didn't work on it. They just kept it there, and it's not done, and I don't know what I'm going to do. And I said, well, do you want me to restore it for you? He goes, would you? And I go, yeah, but it won't be cheap, you know, because, uh, you know, I, I'm going to do it right. And I says, first of all, I said, you know, I never did ask you, where did you get this car from? He goes, well, an old man right here in Phoenix owned it. I go, really? Yeah, he was the first owner. And I go, so you bought it from the original owner? Yes. And he got he bought, ordered it new from Bill Luke Chrysler Plymouth. I said, wow, so it's been an all Arizona car its whole life. He goes, yep. And you're the second owner? Yep. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. You know, I can only give you a ballpark of what I think it might cost to restore it. And, of course, this was now 2008. Uh, and he says, uh, well, I don't know, I'll get back with you. And I'm thinking, oh, well, well, he'll get back with me, but first of all, he won't do it. It won't get done. So about five months later, he calls me and says, um, Dennis, um, I lost my job. I go, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. His name was Kevin. I said, Kevin, I'm so, hard, so, hard, so sorry to hear that. He goes, uh, do you want to still buy my car? I go, oh, heck yeah. Now, I had not seen this car, keep in mind, so I had really no idea what condition it's in, but I didn't care, because I figured I'm going to restore it anyway, and um, so I said, sure, I'll buy it. Uh, we make arrangements to go to his house to get the car. I get to his house, he opens the garage, and I go, oh, shoot. This car is in all kind of pieces. The doors and fenders are inside the car. Uh, the top is, there is no top, it's just a frame. Um, I said, 
where are all the bolts and nuts? Oh, they're in those buckets over there. I go, oh, so none of it's tagged? Nope. I go, okay, well, um, where's the dash? Oh, that's in the backyard. And I go, and the hood? Oh, that's next to it in the backyard. So I go, we go in the backyard, and I swear to God, he's got weeds hip high in the backyard. So we got to put the suspension on it to get it in my trailer. So I call, the, the, call my boys, and I go, okay, guys, let's start putting it together. We, we pull it out into his driveway, and for the next seven hours, we're putting the suspension together. The one good thing about the car is he had the motor rebuilt by one of the uh, drag racing guys right here in Phoenix, who I uh, had work done from before, and I knew it, it, it had to be good because this guy does nothing but good work. In 2010, we started to work on it. No, 2000, I'm sorry, it was, yeah, the end of 2010. And in 19 months, the car was completed, of which four months of that took from the uh, body shop guy that I have who painted my car. We, we put it on a rotisserie so we could do the whole thing top to bottom. And uh, it took him four months, which was probably pretty good back in those days too. They didn't have it that long. And it took us 15 months, my son and I, to finish it. And probably this is one of the few that I'll probably keep for as long as I'm around and pass it down. Probably I'm sure my son will, will want this one but because he did so much work on it. The color of this particular car um, is, and this is original color combination, uh, DD1, light blue metallic, and dark blue metallic seats. Um, the dark blue metallic, the dark blue top uh, was something I decided to put on. It was an option that, that year, although this car came with a white one. I just didn't think with the blue and that, that if I made it the dark blue, it would pop a little more, and I think it does. And this is a base coat, clear coat paint on it. So this DD1 color, it's got a lot of metallic in it on, on the base coat clear. So you can, in the sun, it really looks nice. 440, 375 horse. Standard, standard motor in the GTX was a 440, 375 horse. The only other option you could get was a 426 Hemi. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are only 17 of those convertibles ever made with a Hemi in it. And uh, I had one of those and sold that. Um, let's see, this is 2021, so 2017. What, what really started me off uh, on GTX is this is my very first car. It was the, was the 1967 Plymouth GTX that I ordered brand new in September of 66, three months before uh, I married my wife. And um, the, this particular car, my father at the time, uh, he was a uh, designer for Chrysler. Him, his team used to design the taillights or whatever they call exterior lighting back then. So it would be parking lights, taillights, things like that. And he would always know three years in advance what these cars are gonna look like. I said, Dad, you know, um, I'd like to, uh, what, what's coming up? Do you know anything about any of the other cars coming up? He goes, well, they're going to produce a 67 Plymouth GTX. And I go, what's that? He said, well, it's off the Belvedere line. And he says, you're going to like that one. We get around to a lot of car shows, but rarely do we see a restoration done to the level of quality and authenticity as this one. If you think the car looks good in pictures, you need to see it in person. Wow! Please leave a comment and let us know what you think of this beautiful convertible or whatever else is on your mind. 
These muscle cars always bring back fond memories for our viewers. We'd love to hear from you. Please give this video the thumbs up and share it with your friends. We appreciate all of our car owners, subscribers, viewers, and friends. Be sure to check out a very special part two of the brief but fascinating history of the Plymouth GTX this coming Thursday. Every auto enthusiast will love this one. Until then, remember, please be careful out there.